I've got papers too. Are we good to go? You guys are ready to rock and roll. Ready to rock and roll. All right. All righty. Well, we're live on our Facebook Live. <laughs> I'm just going to throw that out there <laughs> for the people around. Uh, it's been a busy morning here. It has been. Spring it's time. a busy time of the year. Springtime gets real busy real fast. That's right. We and love I, it. Well, I realized yesterday it makes me a little anxious because I feel like I need to be doing everything all at once. Right. And then I just don't have the energy for it. Right. I think that's going to be on my tombstone. She tried to do too much. Mm. It's going to end up. That's what it's going to say. <laughs> Anyways. Hey, um, before you start. Oh, yeah. Okay. I got one for you. Yay. A joke. Do you, know how, do you know how you can tell the gender of an ant? Scientifically, yes, but you tell me, Dad. You take an ant and you toss it in water. Okay. And if it sinks, it's a girl ant. If it floats, it's boy ant. <laughs> You're lucky you have a peanut gallery today. <laughs> okay. All right. What are we going to talk about today, Rachel? Well, I've been seeing people out with their lawnmowers already this summer. This summer, this spring, it was 70 yesterday, that summer to me. Um, and I thought, what better time to talk about the things that we need to make sure our lawn equipment is functioning properly. Because if you're like me, you didn't store it well over the winter. And you right. might need a little maintenance before you start mowing this summer. Yeah, there's nothing more frustrating than getting your lawnmower out or your string trimmer out and it won't start. Amen. And one of the culprits that causes a lot of problems with that is ethanol gas. So if you use ethanol gasoline in your small engine, it's going to give you problems. Um, first step, if you can, buy the gasoline without the ethanol in it. Uh, if you can't, then use one of the additives that's available. And I, I brought everything over here except that one of the additives. But oh, anyway, okay. use one of the additives that's <laughs> available. Um, to neutralize that eth ethanol in the gasoline. And there are a few gas stations around that have the non-ethanol gas available. And if you can't get non-ethanol gas, and when this product first came out, I thought, who in the world is going to buy gasoline in a quart bottle? But it's amazing. This stuff is pre-mixed. There's no ethanol in it. It's a very, very refined grade of gasoline. Uh, your machines run incredibly well with this and our landscapers believe it or not they buy this by the gallons and if your machine calls for a 40 to 1 mix if it's a two cycle that's available if your machine requires a 50 to 1 mix that's available there's even one for a four cycle for your regular lawnmower uh, it comes in quarts and in gallons that one has a picture of a push mower does it work in a Riding mower as well? Or is, I mean, that's a tiny little amount of gas for a riding mower. It, that would be the downside to a rider. Yeah. Walk behind mowers is high need. Awesome. If you're going to mix your own fuel uh, for your two cycle, two cycle machines, um, get a one gallon gas can. You know, try not to store any more than one gallon at a time. Uh, two things happen um, gasoline uh, breaks down over time. And the other thing is, uh, some of that gasoline can evaporate. The gasoline evaporates, the oil does not, so your mix gets richer just by default. Huh. But if you're going to mix your own, if your machine calls for a 40 to 1 mix, use a product that's labeled 40 to 1. And that means this bottle goes in one gallon of gasoline. And the can will have a mark on it where one gallon is. See, I never understand that. It's a not see-through. I know there are some cans that have a, a, a translucent strip here yeah. that you can see through. You just got it. So you get the flashlight you out, gotta stick it on That's the side. That's a great idea. Use a flashlight. Yeah. I wouldn't have thought of that. <laughs> and this is a product, this is a synthetic, and this will do all mixtures 16 to 1, 32 to 1, 40 to 1, 50 to 1. I don't know how it does it. It's kind of like a thermos bottle. How does it know whether it's going to be hot or cold? How does it know? I don't know, Dad. It'll leave it. it's but anyway, it's a good product made by Briggs & Stratton. Uh, you can use this for everything. Awesome. Uh, read your owner's manual. If your warranty states that you must use the designated mix, use the one that's labeled 40 to 1 or 50 to 1. Cool. you got all, all sorts of chemicals here today. Right. If, if you've gotten your lawnmower out or your string trimmer out, 
pull the rope, nothing happens. You pull the rope, nothing happens. You pull the rope, nothing happens. You're really getting frustrated. Uh, get rid of that old gas that's in there. I would tell you to go ahead and get rid of the old gas before you start pulling the rope. But if you've already started, you know, it's done. Exactly. Dump the gas that's in the tank. And don't throw it away. Don't dump it on the ground. You know, put it in a can, put it in your automobile. It'll, it'll work okay in that. It's not going to hurt anything. It's a very small amount. Um, when you put fresh gasoline back in the tank, uh, there's a lot of products on the market now that will help with that ethanol contamination. Uh, one of them that's get a lot of, getting a lot of publicity is Mechanic in a Bottle. Uh, it's not a, a cure-all. It won't fix everything. If, if major damage is done to the carburetor, this is not going to fix it. If it's minor and just needs some cleaning, uh, that will work. One that's been around for a very long time is Seafoam. Uh, Seafoam is a good carburetor cleaner. You mix it with your clean gas. It'll work on your lawnmower, your chainsaw, your automobile, your truck, your boat, your motorcycle, your tractor. You can use this in everything. What's that one? Okay. If, you, <laughs> if you're going to do your own Just maintenance <laughs> on your lawnmower on a, on a four-cycle engine and you're going to change your oil, use the oil that's recommended by the manufacturer of the motor. Uh, this particular one is made by Briggs & Stratton. It's pre-measured to 18 fluid ounces, which is the required amount for most walk-behind mowers. Read your owner's manual, find out how much it's supposed to hold, and use that amount. No more, no less. Some of the newer mowers that's out there today, um, you don't even change the oil in it. When you read the manual, it tells you to check the oil. If it's low, add oil and continue going. You don't change. <laughs> Sorry, I'm going to be running in and out because this child does not want to stand still okay. or go to Nana. <laughs> I'll just keep moving forward. If you're going to do your own maintenance on your lawnmower, um, one inexpensive thing to do is clean and replace your air filter. Uh, if you have an air filter that looks like this one, it's going to have a wrap that goes around the outside of that filter that's going to look like this. It's just a, an elastic foam filter. That's called a pre-filter. It saves, it, it extends the life of this paper filter. The good thing about the pre-filter is you can take some Dawn dishwashing detergent, some warm water, put this in a little bucket or whatever, let it soak, work it around, clean it up really good. You know, if Dawn dishwashing detergent is good enough to clean oil off the of duck feathers, yep. it's certainly good enough to clean oil off a of pre-filter, right? Okay. Yeah. So you can clean this several times before you have to replace the paper filter. Just make sure it's dry before you put it back in the unit. If your machine has one of the newer paper filters, you just replace that. It's not. There's not a good way to clean it. It's designed to be thrown away. A new one installed. Awesome. Okay. I got Flint taken care of. He's with Nana. So Good. There should be no more interruptions. <laughs> Good. Um, yeah, the whole. You want to move on things. to. Here, here's a topic. And after the wind damage, we've had a lot of wind this spring. Um, a lot of tree damage from the wind. People are running chainsaws more than they typically do. Um, every, well, every week, you know, we get somebody that comes in says, give me a chain for a 16-inch chainsaw. Well, what brand chainsaw? What model chainsaw? Uh, well, it's just a 16-inch chainsaw. I just need a replacement chain. Well, there is a lot of different chainsaw chains, and we don't have near all of them. Um, well, we can get them if you need them. We, most of them <laughs> we can. Um, we either need your old chain. If you bring your old chain in, we can match it up. If you have your brand, your model, and the length of the bar, uh, we have a software program that we should be able to look it up and find the chain. Um, so please, you know, bring us your old chain or bring us all the information we need to get you the right chain for your saw. Don't try to use one just because it looks like it's going to fit. The drive teeth can be different, and if they are, they're going to ruin the sprocket on your clutch, and they're going to ruin the sprocket on the end of your bar. And a $20 replacement just went to a $60 replacement. So don't do that. Sounds dangerous, too. Yeah, bring us the information. We also sharpen your old chains, too. Yeah, we do. Say, we have a sharpening service. That's right. 
uh, bring it in on Monday. He typically picks it up that evening, brings it back the next day, uh, Monday through Friday. We don't work him that hard on weekends. It's his brother. Yeah. So. Um, <laughs> a real simple spring tune-up on your lawnmower or your string trimmer or your leaf blower is to replace the spark plug. You know, for under $5, you can put a new plug in. You know it's right. If you want to, you can clean them. Take a wire brush and clean them. Uh, but for less than five bucks, it's usually better just to take your old plug out and put a new one in. If you're going to do that, do yourself a favor and buy a good quality spark plug wrench. You know, there are I didn't spark know plug, that existed. There are spark plug wrenches on these tool tables. We sell them. They're good for losing skin off your knuckles. Some of them are made to put a screwdriver through a hole in it and it takes spark plug out. Um, they're inexpensive, but the skin on your knuckles is probably more valuable than what you'll save by buying a good quality spark plug wrench. Do yourself a favor. Same thing when it comes to string trimmer line. Uh, you can find all kinds of string trimmer, string trimmer line out there from the box store, 99 cent a roll, plastic stuff, uh, to this one. This one is Magnum Gator Line. What's unique about that, it has a carbon core inside the, the uh, string itself. It gives it a lot more strength, and it's very, very flexible. The other good thing about it is on some of the more, least, less expensive line, uh, that string trimmer generates some heat in the spool. And when it does, it kind of melts that all together, yeah. and it won't advance your line. There you are, bump, 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 won't advance. You gotta take it up, pull the head off, pull the line out, and go again. That doesn't happen with this. It does not melt and go all together. Um, you know, get that lawn work done so you can enjoy your lawn, enjoy the outside. Yeah. Well, you covered a lot of stuff on here, but. Uh, one thing I wanna get to. Uh, <laughs> Replacing V belts on anything, whether it's a fan, whether it's a lawnmower, whether it's a rototiller, there are two types of V belts. This one is inexpensive and it is rated, this is called a fractional horsepower belt. It's only intended for less than a horsepower application, you know, half horse, three quarter horse one horsepower fan motors. They work okay for that. They'll work for a short time on a piece of power equipment with a five, eight, 10, 12 horsepower motor. Won't work very long. What you need for power equipment is a horsepower rated belt. It's a Kevlar material. Uh, it's designed for that application. It'll work. Um, there again, bring your old belt with you uh, so that we can measure it. And we have a gauge. Um, that'll tell us what the length and the width. The belts come in different widths as well as different lengths. Uh, Even if it's broken, you can figure it out. If it's we, yes, we can. Got a cut in it. Right. Um, and I want to bring this one to your attention. This is an MTD Genuine Original Part belt. Sometimes you can, you can get an equivalent in a power rated belt, but it's not always a perfect match. The reason being, <clears throat> the manufacturer's belts a lot of times are made to a different width mm. and they're made to a different bevel and they're made out of a different material that's mm. designed for that machine. Like I say, you may get by, you may be able to mow a couple of times with a, ge a generic belt, but it'll never hold up to the original equipment belt. Hmm. Well, that's some interesting information. I don't have a whole lot to say about it because I don't know much about any of it. Well, but now I know a little bit more. Right. Um, we also have some events coming up. Yes, we do. Um, if you want more Randy's knowledge, um, tonight we have a fun event happening at our downtown uh, space. Uh, we are inviting Randy and his mom to come down and answer questions about your gardening. If you want to start a garden, especially if you live downtown Harrisonburg and you have a small plot in your backyard, or if you want to do container gardening, um, Randy and Grandma Louise have been gardening here since, well, Grandma's been gardening for 70 years, and you've been gardening for almost that much. Yeah. <laughs> um, 
So they know a lot of information and you've been taking that Master Gardener course, so you're well on your way to being a master of the garden. I just need to volunteer some time. Well, this is your volunteer You time. can volunteer to do my garden. Yes. <laughs> I'll sign off on your paperwork. I will do that. It's a great idea. Um, and we also have, I don't have a flyer for the other thing coming up, um, our customer appreciation days. That's right. It'll be at all three locations. Yes. Uh, simultaneously. Uh, you could just go bing, 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 hit yeah. them all. Bridgewater, <laughs> our downtown location, and of course here in Timberville. Uh, we've got a lot of a lot of things going on that day. We're going to have some manufacturer reps here, some vendors mm -hmm. uh, showing off their products. The same thing in Bridgewater, same thing in the downtown market in Harrisonburg. Yeah. Uh, we're going to have some door prizes. Uh, there may be some giveaways. Uh, there will be giveaways. I've been beating the email and cell phone <laughs> for 48 hours. Okay. There, there will be giveaways. Vendors, be vendors are not my friends right now, but they are sending me stuff. Yes. Okay. So there will be a, giveaways. It's going to be a fun day. Yeah, we hope time. the weather cooperates, but it's going on rain or shine, yeah. wind or snow. You know, we're going to do this. And Please, no snow. We do appreciate all you of our customers. Take back that snow. Here. Yeah. You don't, don't you be saying snow. snow. And all, uh, all the communities that support us in everything we do. So yeah. Thanks. And this is our way of saying thanks. Absolutely. We're so excited to see everybody. Um, we hope you come down for all of our events. So we and do have some food vendors coming, right? We mm -hmm. do. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yep. Um, and if you, since you're already on Facebook, watching this on Facebook Live, um, go over to our events and you'll see both the gardening and our um, customer appreciation. I've been posting some pictures and some things in that event page so that you can get some more information about what's happening in each store. And I'll keep updating that as we get closer to the date. Um, but remember, we don't mind your questions. We don't mind them at all. 